All right, so we're going to take a look at the segment relationships inside of a circle. And we're going to be looking at the uh, chord chord product theorem, the secant secant pro uh, product theorem, as well as the secant tangent product theorem. Now, here's how it works. If I have two chords uh, that intersect not on the edge, but intersect uh, in, on the interior of the circle, we know that the product of uh, this line segment times this line segment will equal the product of this line segment times this line segment. And so essentially, we're, we're taking where the cores intersect and multiplying the pieces of one chord together, multiplying the pieces of another chord together, and ultimately those products should match. So uh, like here we have AH times HL, and that should equal YH times SH. Now the uh, secant secant theorem is just a little bit different in that we are going to be multiplying the overall length, the m to t1, and we're going to multiply that overall length by the length of the secant that is on the exterior of the circle, ma. And that product is going to equal the product of the entire secant, mt2, times ml short part. And the secant um, tangent theorem is very similar to the secant secant theorem. We're going to multiply BA, the entire length of that secant, times uh, BO, just the exterior of that secant. And when you multiply those together, you will get BH squared multiply it times itself. So those are the theorems that we're going to be working with, and let's take a look at some examples, shall we? All right, our first example, uh, we have two chords. So this is the chord-chord theorem, right? And uh, just to help myself out, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take a picture of it so that I can remember these theorems lest I get them wrong. All right. So I'm going to just place them right over here for now. That's out of the way. All right. So <clears throat> we're saying this segment X times this segment here, 14, is going to equal uh, 70, 7 times 10. So I'm going to divide 70 by 14. And so I find that this segment here is 5, which means that this whole segment here, segment EF, chord EF, is 19. And obviously, GH is 17. Uh, it's already given to us. So. Let's move on to example two. So example two, we have this beautiful crescent moon and we want to figure out what is the diameter of this crescent moon. And if I were to continue this, I get something that looks like this. Right? Okay, that's a pretty crappy crescent moon. How about this one? Ah, oh, it looks a little bit better. But notice how the uh, intersection of the two chords not not probably not right in the middle. So um, we are going to have to figure out this distance right here. And so this is a lot easier to see once I draw it as a complete circle. Well, 
if this whole uh, length of the chord is 18, we know that this is 9, this is also 9. So we know that 81, 9 times 9, is equal to 8 times something else. So let's divide 81 by 8. And we get 10 and 1 8. So 10 and 1 8 plus this 8 is going to be 18 and 1 8. So the diameter of the plate is 18 and 1 8. All right. Moving on to example number three. over here. All right, so now we have two secants. So obviously we're talking about this one right here. <clears throat> and so we know that this segment right here, which is going to be, I'm going to type it because it's going to be a little bit faster. That whole segment, GE, is going to be equal to X plus the 8 that is on the exterior of the circle. Well, we're going to mul that, multiply that by the... Um, segment that is on the exterior of the circle, 8. And so for this side, 9 plus 7 is <coughs> 16. So we're going to be multiplying 7 times 16, the part that is outside the circle, times the entire secant. So let's go ahead and multiply 7 times 16. 7 times 16. Let's try 17 times, oh my god, 7 times 16. I'll get it right one of these days, I swear. So that's a 112. So we know that uh, 8 times x plus 8 is going to equal 112. Well, let's divide 112 by 8 divide really both sides of the expression by 8. And so I get x plus 8 is equal to 8. I'm going to redo it because my short-term memory is shot. I can't remember what the answer was. Divide by 8 is 14, all right. You probably remember that just fine. So 14. And so we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. When I subtract 8 from both sides, I get x is equal to 6. I really do want to type in that box. x is equal to 6. Now, if I've done everything right, not going to keep a secret. If I made a mistake, that's fine. I will to let you know about it. But luckily, my answer matches the answer that is in the book. So we're doing good. So if we know that this is 6, we know that GE has to be a total of 14. And, and we already knew that right here in this part of the expression. And we knew that DE was 16. All right. The last example we want to talk about, oh, shocking. It's a tangent. So, um, so we know that x squared is going to be equal to uh, 20, the distance, the entire distance of that secant, times the part that's on the exterior, 5. Well, I know that 20 times 5 is 100, so that means that x squared is equal to 100. And the, the my, my nice convenient thing about that is 100 is a perfect square. And so x is equal to 10. Double checking, make sure, okay, we're, we're cooking with gas now. All right, so that means uh, that this segment from x to y is simply 10.
So that is how to use the chord chord product theorem, the secant secant product theorem, as well as the secant tangent product theorem. Any time now.